Hey everybody, this is Aaron with Software Zero to Hero, and this is part two of our Sphinx documentation series. The first part we covered the installation, and well, that was kind of the pre-part one with the installation of Sphinx, and then we started to get into the actual documentation for part one, where we created our first Sphinx Quick Start project, and we created our first page with some uh, headers on there, some bullets, and then also just a little bit of just text in there for the general idea with it. So today we're actually going to go over the overall aspect of Sphinx when it comes to making new pages, embedding images, and actually changing the theme as well. So let's go ahead and look at our project that we had. So this is our first page that we created. And this theme right here is the standard theme that comes with Sphinx, which is Alabaster, which this theme does just fine with everything and the looks wise, but it doesn't always fit the need of every project. And personally, I don't usually use Alabaster. I use a theme called Read the Docs theme. And the reason I use it is usually because it's just a nice looking theme. It kind of gives more of that dynamic web page feel instead of just a static page with just some text on it like the Alabaster theme does. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to change the theme of this. So go ahead and open your project that we had. And with that, you'll go ahead and open the terminal as well and make sure to CD into the Sphinx directory and then your project, which mine was test there. So the next thing you need to do is make sure that you have your virtual environment set up, which that was that source env bin activate command that we went over last time. And once you have that in parentheses over here for your environment, which is named env on mine here, you'll know that you're in that virtual environment. So first things first, you'll need to actually go through and install Sphinx Read the Docs theme, which would be the pip install Sphinx RTD theme right here in this command. And once you do that, you can go ahead and hit enter on there, which I've already installed this, so it's going to pop up a bunch of stuff how it already has been satisfied for it, which it will take just a few minutes to import that into with pip there. All right, so now that you've got that installed on there, we can go ahead and go into our conf.py file over here, which that's our full configuration file that we're going to need. So I went ahead and just did a couple things ahead of time just to test out and make sure everything was working. So the first thing you need to do is go into your extensions up here, and you need to go ahead and type in, in single quotation marks, the Sphinx underscore RTD underscore theme, and add that to the extensions list here. And once you have that done, you're going to go ahead and go down to your HTML theme and you're going to import Sphinx underscore RTD underscore theme, just like in the extensions up there. And once you have that in there, you're going to change this theme right here, which will originally say Alabaster. And you're going to change that to the same thing of that Sphinx reads the docs theme, just like we've put in the last two parts. So once you have that in there, go ahead and save your file there for it. And let's go ahead and rebuild those HTML pages to make sure. And once those HTML pages are built, we should have a new theme showing up on our web page for the documentation. So let's go over there and take a look. So let's go ahead and refresh that, and boom. We have a whole new theme, which is a little bit slicker that I, uh, than the alabaster theme typically is. So we have our name test project. We still have all that same text, but it seems to organize it a little bit better too. And then you have instead of the copyright and what kind of theme being right over here in this general area, it actually places it right underneath everything. You have your previous arrows being a little more dynamic instead of those static looking. And then you also have your table over here too that you can go through and click back to your home project or click to those individual pages as well. So this is great and all, which the Read the Docs theme is actually set up to where it uses only about 50% of this white space over here, and sometimes about, you know, a little over 50% like this is, which is fine and dandy for a lot of projects, but the reason that was set up that way is because they said a lot of people didn't have the retention to scroll over all the way on a page. Well, with some projects, you need that extra space when it comes to embedding images or coding or any kind of documentation that might be a little extensive. So we're going to go ahead and change that part of it too here. So the, this took a little while for me to figure out, but once I did, it was really nice to have. So we're going to go ahead and create that custom CSS theme that we need for 
uh, using the rest of the page on there and really maximizing that white space. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go into your build folder here and in this static. And then once you're in there, you'll have a CSS directory as well. And you're going to go ahead and create a custom width CSS. And that's what I'm using right here. So with this, I have it commented out already, but with this, you're going to go ahead and type this in and make sure to save this because this is going to actually use that navigation content and make the max width the 1400 pixels on there. And it's going to make sure it overrides it with that important section as well to go ahead and use and maximize that space. So once you have that in there, go ahead and save that file and then go ahead and remake your HTML pages again. And we should see a difference when it comes to the actual usage of the of the page itself, which we might not see with what little text we have on the page. But once we start building other stuff, you'll really be able to notice a difference. So, yeah, see, we didn't really see a whole lot of change there just because we have a lot of extra space right over here that we're not really using because there's not a whole lot of long sentences. But we will be able to see that later on when we start getting into more of the documentation and some of the later parts of the series. So now that we have that custom width put in, that's great. And we can go ahead and go back into our file here and we can see that we've changed the theme. We've added a custom width to everything, which is great. I mean, that's just bugging me. I need to take out that spacing right there. So we have that. And now we're going to go ahead and look at creating a second page. So let's go ahead and uh, lower all that right there. And let's go back down into our source here. <laughs> And we're going to go ahead and create a new page. So within source, go ahead and create a new file. And let's call it page two. And you want to make sure to put the tag of RST on the end of it for that restructured text language there. So now that we have that, first things first, any page, just like I've covered in the first part of this series, you have to have a header for the page to properly build. So let's go ahead and put a header in there. And with those headers, you want to make sure that you keep the proper under casing on those. And it has to be at least the minimum length of the header title itself. So you want to go ahead and use that. So with a header one, like a main header, you would use the equal sign to go all the way across. And I typically try to do three after that. That way I have a little bit of extra space. And if you do decide to change that title name, you will have to adjust the the underscores underneath it to adjust if it's a little bit longer and it needs to fulfill that status. So let's go ahead and build this page up right here. And let's go ahead and go back to our index, which is our main page with everything with our talk tree there as well. So we have that on there and we have the talk tree for page one and we have that as well. And we can go ahead and make as many talk trees as we want. As long as it's within the project, there's a talk tree somewhere. But let's just go ahead and put it right here with this one for now, and then we'll get into the other part a little bit later. So let's go ahead and build that and make sure we save all files too. And let's rebuild our make HTML pages there and see if we have a page two that comes up and then we can navigate to it. All right, now that those pages are built, let's go ahead and refresh the page here, which this is not working. Let's go ahead and just make a new one like this. There we go. So now that we're back into it, you can see that we have our second page. So this is page two. It pops up everything. It falls underneath our table here and it falls under the part one aspect of it as well, because that's what we had that part of it named there. So as you can see, everything pops into there. You can actually adjust this with the HTML uh, documentation, which we'll go into a little bit for the theme options as well. So that way it doesn't hide anything. So you can see that is listed under our talk tree there to actually navigate to that page. So let's go ahead and go back in there and change some of that aspect as well. So if you go back into your conf.py file, you're going to have that HTML theme. And right underneath that, you can go ahead and type in the HTML theme options. And you can set that equal and create your handlebars for that or your curly brackets for that too. 
So let's go with logo only. Let's set that to true. And then we can have our collapse navigation. Set that to true. Oh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be a comma. That way we have our whole list here. And then the sticky navigation, which that's the one that we're really wanting to look at for this. So. And that's going to be set to true as well. And then our include hidden. That's going to be true. The next one is our navigation depth, and that's the one that we're going to be setting for that navigation aspect on here. And we're going to set that to four. And then the final one we have is titles only. Well, we don't want just the titles only when it comes to the navigation and the theme options as well, because we want maybe some of those subheaders to be listed on the navigation as well, just so you can navigate to a page and a specific part of that page a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead and set that one to false. And let's go ahead and save this. And with this, we should have an update when it comes to building our HTMLs as well. And it has been a little bit slow when it comes to the refreshing of the page, too. So we might have to just wait just a second to see if it actually does everything that we're wanting it to do. So we have that on there. And now if we click on the main way we can really tell this is the fact that beforehand, when you would click on this is our first Sphinx page, this page two would go away. Well, with that sticky navigation, it's going to stay there now. And if we go ahead and go back into this, we can test the other aspect of it too. So let's go ahead and go into page one. And we've created that first header here with some bullet points. So let's go ahead and create a second header. But we want to make sure we don't use the equal signs for that, which you still can to make that second header one on there. But typically with proper headings, you want to go to the next level down, almost like a subheader that way. So with that, we're going to go ahead and just use a single dash. Now, like I said, I like to go three out with that. And with that, we're going to write in this is our test of the second header. So let's go ahead and make sure everything works on here. So go ahead and save this. We're going to build those HTML pages again. And we should see a subheader pop up under this first Sphinx page too, under that page one within the, uh, the table on the side over there. So let's go ahead and see right there. So you can see this is our second header and it's actually collapsible. And that's where that collapse navigation was true to where you can collapse it out and you can expand it with the plus or minus over here. So you can see that second header. So if this page was quite a bit larger, you would, you know, it would be hard to navigate through a lot of that page, but if you could come over here and just see one of the header titles, and that was what you're specifically looking for, you could click on that, it'll automatically navigate to that header or subheader on there for it. So with that, I think that's going to be the end of this part two of the project. The next time on part three, we're going to go over admonitions, uh, creating inner and external links, and also embedding images onto your Sphinx documentation as well. So thank you for tuning into this video. Sorry it's a little bit long and make sure to like and subscribe to Software Zero to Hero.